In this presentation, we shall be discussing about the reciprocating compressions. We shall be discussing about the working principle, types and uses, components and their function, intercooler, bearing and lubrication, gland sealing arrangements, flow control, purging and vibration measurements. <clears throat> Let us see what happens to the air or a gas when it is compressed. The gas loss is PV is equal to RT that is pressure into velocity is equal to universal gas constant R into the temperature. Keeping the combination law in mind when the air is compressed the pressure and temperature of the air increases as the volume of the space containing air reduces. This is called adiabatic compressor which increases the temperature of the compressed fluid. <clears throat> now let us talk about the reciprocating compression. In reciprocating compressor, work is done by trapping and compressing a specific volume of a gas between the piston and the cylinder wall. The back and forth motion that is linear motion incorporated by a reciprocating compressor pulls gas in the suction that is the inlet stroke and discharge it on the other that is the discharge stroke. A spring loaded suction and discharge non return valves opens and closes automatically as the piston moves up and down in the cylinder chamber. <clears throat> this type of compressor can produce the maximum gas pressure. Now let us see the major components of a reciprocating com <clears throat> compressor. This is the crank area, this is the crank shaft, this is the crank shaft and this is called connecting rod which is connecting the crank shaft to the this is the cross head it is connecting to the cross head. Here there is a while there is a while pump and while pump lubricates <coughs> all the parts of the compression. This is the piston rod which is connected between the cross head and the this is your piston and the piston which is put inside this cylinder. The purpose of connecting rod and cross it together is to convert the circular motion of the crankshaft into the linear motion. <clears throat> now you see here this is a very big compressor so there is a distant piece provided here so that the pistons can be taken out for the maintenance. Here these are the scraper rings so that because this is a lubricated type uh, compressor so that the oil does not got here. This is the pressure packing or the gland packing. This is the cylinder head that is the cover of the cylinder and then you have got this is your unload. This is a uh, loader unloader of the compressor the air air enters enters from this point it comes into the hollow space of the compressor and due to the movement of the piston when it moves towards the left it is the suction stroke the suction valve here the suction valve opens this is the suction valve it opens draw the air inside and then when the piston moves towards the right that is the discharge stroke the suction valve is closed by the spring and the discharge valve open and the air is discharged. <clears throat> this is the rod nut where piston is tight this is the piston head cover and here the, this is there is a jacket water cooled jacket because the temperature increases when we compress so this is a water cooled jacket to cool <clears throat> the cylinder. This is this this space we have seen. This is frame extension and this is the compression frame. Now <clears throat> let us see, sir, some more components. You see, the gas compressors needs to be purged. So for that, 
these are the connect vent connections provided for purging here you can see the water jacket here the water is here this is the this portion is the intermediate seal housing this is seal housing and all other things already we have explained it to you in the previous drawing now <clears throat> there are various configurations for the reciprocating compression what you see on the top left corner is and on the bottom right corner is a <clears throat> two a stroke horizontal compression what you see at the bo left bottom is a vertical <clears throat> compression moving in vertical direction and what you see on the right hand side top is a v shape compression so there are various type shapes as per the requirement designed by the manufacturers now let you see what you see here is a multi stage compression there is a hp cylinder and low lp cylinder so first the air is comp or gas is compressed in the low pressure cylinder and then it passes through intercooler and then it goes to the <coughs> low pressure cylinder so It, what happens the connecting rod is transmitting the rotation to the crank cross head the cross head is converting the circular motion to spread motion piston rod is connecting cross head head to the piston which moves in a straight line with the cylinder compressing the gas the suction and discharge valves as, as i discussed earlier is <coughs> spring loaded non return valves and jacket cooler cools the jacket and saves it from the overheating now what we see here is a diagram of the multi stage compression on the right hand side we have the first stage of the compression and after the compression the air passes through intercooler where the while air uh, <coughs> where the air is passing through the cell and the cooling water is passing through the tubes after cooling the air cooled air now goes to the second stage for the compression so now let us see the what is the advantage of a multi stage compression the work done in compressing the air is reduced thus the power is saved because compressor is a volumetric machine it prevents the mechanical problem as the air temperature is controlled it is cooled the suction and delivery valves remains in cleaner condition as the temperature and vaporization of lubricating oil is less the machine is a smaller and better balanced effect from washer can be handled better by draining at each stage so we always provide the traps for that that purpose <coughs> compression actually a approaches near isothermal and that's how the efficiency of the compressor improves now <clears throat> for the sealing of the grant it is required that we put the packings in the so in the gland so you see this is the gland or staphylum gland portion and here if you see here several packings are put and in between you see there is a op oh, there is a ring put lantern ring through which we put the cooling gas or for or for lub so that the heat of compression is reduced there are various type there are another this is the gland packing what you see on the left hand side top is actually the pressure packing which is in form of ring and which is inserted here now the heat of see the when the comp this piston rod moves in the stuffing box the heat is generated and which is removed by the cooling area so <clears throat> finally you see this is the stuffing box this is called throat this is called lanterning and these are the packings and then finally there are studs and bolt through which we tighten the <coughs> gland packing now let us see how the capacity of a reciprocating compressor can be controlled economically a first is it can mostly it is done by the loading and unloading which is the most common adopted process by automatic start and then stopping manually 
और एडजस्टिंग द डिस्चार्ज वर्ब क्लियरेंस बट डिस्चार्ज वर्ब एडजस्टिंग क्लियरेंस इज ए परमानेंट चेंज सो दिस इज हैज टू बी डन विद द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम सम एक्सपर्ट नाउ लेट अस सी हाउ ए लोडिंग अनलोडिंग वर्ब ऑपरेट्स द डायग्राम हियर शोस यू द लोडर अनलोडर यू सी द गैस इज coming from here and this gun is now what happens that this is a spring loaded this is a spring loaded and the spring here keeps the valve open now this line is coming from the air receiver where compressor is discharging so what happens when the receiver pressure is less then the set point the spring keeps the valve open but as soon as the pressure in the reservoir increases the air pressure will increase it process presses the disc and the <coughs> valve closes and compressor gets unloaded again when the discharge pressure comes down the spring opens the valve and that's how how the process continues <coughs> now let us talk about the lubrication system of the <coughs> compression so you see it in you see that in the diagram this is the oil pump inside the crank shaft and then <coughs> there are there is there is a oil pump and from there it is going to the oil cooler oil filter and then from there this is going to the <coughs> lubricating all the crank shaft bearing and then through the connecting rod it goes to the cross head there is a hole in the connecting rod we will see later on and through which it goes to the cross head and lubricate the cross head if the cylinder is also lubricated then there is just another line <coughs> here which goes to lubricate the cylinder so <clears throat> now <clears throat> for loading you see there are different type of valves used for suction and discharge of the compressor the the one shown here is called channel valve and it is used for a for low pressures up to 10 bar so here you see this is the guard which has got the holes and then there are a spring leaf springs which are put here on these holes and this is the actually the leaf or the moving element which is put on the this spring and then this it is tight this guide is compressing them and then the seat plate we put the seal plate and the seat and then finally with this screw we tighten the everything <clears throat> what is see on the left hand side is called the poppet valve and this type of valve is used for very very high pressure compressions so you see the flow comes from here these are the holes through which the air passes but this type of poppets or this type of valves are here in the hole so when this compressor is on <clears throat> valves are closed and open as required if you see that in detail so you see this is the valve guard this is the lip this is the lift water this is the valve spring actually this is the pin on which the spring is mounted this is the puppet this is a seat plate actually that this valve puppet valve sits on this seat plate and this is the valve body plate another well which is used for medium pressure is called plate type valve and it looks like this but the this if you see the components these are the valve seats uh, <clears throat> and then this is the washer this is valve plate these are all the dampering plates and <clears throat> a spring plates and then there is a buffer plate there is a washer and then it is tightened with this nut <clears throat> now <clears throat> very big compressors in very big compressors piston ring cannot take all the loads so the rider rings are provided in all big <clears throat> compressors and there 
rider sinks are provided can be provided two ways what we see on the left hand side is <clears throat> that the rider ring is in the center and the piston rings are on the outer side whereas on the right hand side which is for a very big compressor the there are two rider rings outside and the piston rings are in between the rider rings now there is a general ring that the side clearance should be equal to 0.12 inch per inch of the ring width this is the ring width so it is as per that formula <coughs> now let us see some of the parts of the reciprocating compressor so the, what you see here on the left hand it is the crank shaft this is this, this is the crank set and this is the crank shaft here <coughs> then this is the connecting rod this is called a small end bearing which is connected to the cross head this is called big end bearing which is connected to the crank shaft this is the cross head and this is the main bearing of the compressor we will see few more components this is the cylinder this is the cylinder <coughs> this is connection these are the connections for the valve this is the cylinder liner cylinder liner we provide so that there is a wear of the liner which can be replaced and there will not be any wear of the cylinder this is the loader and loader which i have already described you earlier this is your piston end nut and this is your cross head jam nut <clears throat> what we see here in this slide is the assembly between the <clears throat> crank shaft and the cross head so this is the crank shaft on which through the big end bearing this is the this is the big end bearing this is the bearing this is connected here after putting this this comes into hubs after putting this this lock nuts are put and then is a lock wire is tied so that it don't open now you see there in the connecting rod there are holes for the flow of the oil so lube oil form here through these hole holes come here and then it comes to the cross head and through these holes this is the cross head bearing it flows and it lubricates the cross head <coughs> this big this is fitted here with the cross head pen this is the cross head this is this shoe we call cross head shoe this is the actually cap screw for just tightening this is your piston rod and this is the piston rod nut through which we can adjust the length of the piston rod now <clears throat> let us talk about some major failures of the compression so you see there may be worn out of the pistons or piston rings <clears throat> worn out of cylinders rings there if the valve is damaged metal rebri may fall into the while there may be valve failure or valve passing connecting rod cranks up wear which are worsens further from the while pump <clears throat> center and rear bearing worn out or it is seized connecting rod for may sometime has may broke motor and bearing there may be wear or failure center and rear bearing may be may worn or get seized valve plates gets discolored when they overheat or suction valve will get discolored connect it discolored if it is passing burn discharge valve reads burn and own piston rings and cylinder all rods and bearing own and score <coughs> crank shaft uniformly scored and heat it is discolored due to the heat rod is broken or seizure and we need to look for the while in the crank case <clears throat> uh, there may be some time even discoloring of the while which then we need to replace the while now <clears throat> let us talk some of the uh, major problems frame vibration <clears throat> the most important vibration parameter of successful monitoring of the vibration is the frame vibration when properly applied monitoring frame vibration will prevent catascopic failure that means the equipment is failing again and again in event of a failure the damage to the reciprocating machine can be reduced 
most resporting pressure frame vibration is at frequently corresponding to the operating speed since these machines operate relatively at a slow speed a velocity transducer low frequency accelerometer are routinely used to measure the vibration so let us see the where the vibration is to be measured <coughs> what should be the location so in this figure it is shown here this is the cross head and the casing casing vibration may should be put here and it should be put here <coughs> so cross head has got a lubricated surface it moves back and forth we know reciprocating when the clearance between the cross head and surface increases the cross head vibration level will also increase monitoring cross head vibration allows the operator to schedule maintenance in time to make sure that the clearance between the surface and cross head stays within acceptable limit now this as per the api 618 standard i have given the values for the maximum values for different vibrations <clears throat> and it is given for both hard horizontal and vertical for both it is given <clears throat> velocity is in millimeters per second <clears throat> given so all the readings are given you can keep it a record of it and compare your machine with that the velocities are given in rms displacement as well as in velocity also <clears throat> now one of the major region which goes undetected unnoticed in the reciprocating compressor is <clears throat> the raw drop you see these machines are designed with horizontal cylinders and pistons so what happens that some you see if there is a wear of the piston ring then what happens our piston rod was horizontal now it will not remain horizontal it will slightly go down so and for that reason what will happen there will be a sharp gland leakage and we will be going on changing the packing but the gland leakage will not stop then if we neglect it it will cause run out of the rod is mean the rod will bend at some point and even sometime the rod may break so let us see what is called vertical and horizontal run out see if this is horizontal run out we may, so what happens actually this this is the center line for the cylinder and this is the center line so and cross line when both of them are in the same line there is no run out but if they have shifted like shown on the right hand side you see the piston should center should, this my piston rod center should be in this line but in this line here on the left line but it is shifted to the right and this the gap between the two is the run out <clears throat> similar way we can there is there may be a vertical run out you see here this is the center line actually for the cross head as well as it should of the cylinder <clears throat> but what happens due to the wear of the piston ring the it goes down the piston goes down and this now rod is not totally hard now it is not totally vertical so let us see how to measure <clears throat> it is demonstrated here it is demonstrated in a, a small video so let us see how to measure the run out and it is already written six self explained you can see it <clears throat>
You see, this is the formula given here, how to measure the, you see, this is the stroke, the, your piston is moving to this end, this is the in total length of your piston rod and then run out, it is measured here and then the drop is calculated, total drop is calculated by this graph, means you have to plot it on the graph and you have to extend this line up to here and this is actually the differential drop and run out is equal to distance differential drop divided by rod length into the stroke. So delta drop is actually cylinder running clearance minus cross head running clearance divided by 2 and the allowable run out depends on the bore size of the cylinder. If cylinder is smaller than 6 inch then in positive side maximum run out allowed is 0 0.004 inch and minimum is 0 0.0017 for 6 inch and larger bore cylinders it is plus 0 0.006 inch positive and negative is 0 0.0017 inch. <clears throat> now see purging of gas compressor is very essential because the purging of toxic and in, uh, inflammable gases <clears throat> if we don't do uh, it will enter the environment and toxic gas will cause problem and there is a fire or explosion result if the gas is inflammable. So <clears throat> we are using the displacement purging method with nitrogen gas mostly we are using. Before handing over a ga ca gas compressor for maintenance <clears throat> to ensure that process gas is fully replaced by nitrogen to avoid inflammation ex or explosion. Before restarting after the maintenance to ensure that the air gas is fully replaced by nitrogen to avoid inflammable explosion and the nitrogen is replaced by the process gas. So thank you very much uh, for your patience. I have put a lot of other videos on YouTube and all the links are given here and you can <coughs> view them. Please like and subscribe my channel to get information about new videos being uploaded in the future. In the future videos are going to come on gas turbine, pneumatic control system and hydraulic system. Thank you very much.